A new exhibition at the Pulitzer celebrates its 10th anniversary year. That's next on City Corner. and welcome to City Corner. A new exhibition at the Pulitzer Foundation for the Arts uh, celebrates its 10th anniversary year and they also have a new director. Please welcome Christina Van Dyke. Christina, welcome. Thank you for having me. I guess I can say welcome to St. Louis too. Thank you. You've been in town, what, just since fall? Exactly, I moved in November. From Houston, Texas. That's right. And how do you find our fair city so far? I like it a lot. It's a very welcoming city. I think it's a very easy place to be a newcomer. And I'm you know, very excited to be part of the cultural community here. Of which we have a pretty good one, don't you think? I agree. <laughs> That's why I moved here. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm really impressed by the, the quality of the, the visual uh, arts here, certainly in St. Louis, as well as music, theater, opera. And uh, I think it's a very exciting place to be uh, because we can provide a lot of great uh, cultural assets for free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were talking about the, with somebody before the show that a lot of people don't uh, realize probably that the Pulitzer is free and open to the public. You know, a lot, a lot of places you have to pay to go in. Exactly. So like the St. Louis Art Museum or the zoo, uh, we are free and open to the public. We're open on Wednesdays and Saturdays, which is a, a little unusual um, to only be open these two days a week. Uh, but on Wednesday, we're open from 12 to 5 and on Saturday from 10 to 5. And when we're not open to the public for exhibition viewing, uh, we're frequently developing innovative programming that allows people to experience the exhibitions in new and unexpected ways. Is it sort of special for you being a director of the Pulitzer at a time when they're celebrating their 10th anniversary, which is quite a milestone? It is. It's, it's a really exciting time to join the institution. Um, in fact, our staff has been involved in a process of, uh, of of retrospective looking at what we've done in the past 10 years. As I think you know, the Pulitzer is both a sanctuary for art and a laboratory for art and ideas. And we've spent the last few months just looking back, systematically going through the exhibitions that we've done, the programming that we've done, and thinking very much about you know, what worked, uh, what didn't work, uh, what we want to do more of, what the community really responded to, and thinking about our way forward. Mm -hmm. Well, you replace uh, Matthias Vashek, mm -hmm. who was, I guess, uh, the director for about, I guess it was about seven years That's before right. he left. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I know you haven't personally met him, but uh, um, what's that like to follow in somebody else's shoes? Is there any pressure in that? Or, or you just feel like you're starting fresh? Well, I, I am really excited by the things that Matthias did while he was at the Pulitzer, and probably his most innovative um, contribution to the Pulitzer was to hire two social workers. We employed two social workers uh, full-time and this was a collaboration that he developed with the George Warren Brown School of, of Social Work at Washington University and he was very interested at, as was uh, Emmy Pulitzer and Eddie Lowler who's the Dean at uh, the Social Work School at WashU. And the question of you know what does social work have to say to an arts institution and I, mean, I think that they were very much um, thinking together about how state and federal governments have slashed budgets that provide social services to people. And certainly Dean Lowler was thinking about the future of his uh, graduates or his graduate students, his MSWs, and um, thinking about new paths for them as uh, old paths I think were kind of shutting down. Mm -hmm. Well let's talk about the building itself. That's a, piece of, uh, that's a piece of artwork in itself, isn't it? It is something that uh, St. Louis should be tremendously proud of. We have a couple of uh, images of the building, and uh, the architect is very significant. Could you Right, the discuss architect that? is a Japanese architect named Tadao Ando. This was his first museum building in the United States. And this is just a piece of permanent artwork outside, right? This is a, not just a piece of permanent well, artwork. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sorry about that. Um, a sculpture by the <laughs> American sculptor Richard Serra, and the sculpture is called Joe. It is, in fact, a permanent installation, and it's a, it's a 
permanent installation at the, the Pulitzer, along with another work of art uh, that is a permanent installation that was commissioned by the, the artist Ellsworth Kelly. These were both artists uh, to whom Emmy and Joe Pulitzer were very close. And I think this is one of the defining features of uh, this building is that there was this kind of synergy between artists and architects from the get-go. These aren't things that were added. In fact, yes, here's the Ellsworth Kelly. But these weren't things that were added after the building was, um, was built. Um, they were very much conceived of uh, being part of the building during the process itself. So Ellsworth Kelly, Richard Serra, and Tadao Onda were all in conversation with Emmy Pulitzer, uh -huh. who commissioned the building. Yeah, well, I guess, you know, any building that displays art, um, I mean, the building is part of the experience, but this building especially so. That's right. And, you know, the, I think that this is really the, the genius of, of Emmy's commission. Um, thinking uh, of of the selection that she made in architects, she was very she's very interested in the idea of um, a, a viewer being aware of his or her experience in time. And Tadao Ando's architecture allows you uh, to kind of tap into the nowness of your experience because he brings natural light into the building. So anytime you're in the building, the light is changing and you're getting a different, a different feeling in relation to the, the work of art. Well, you have a new, a new exhibit that's running through uh, almost to the end of October to celebrate the Pulitzer's 10th anniversary and in, in, in the still epiphany. And it's pieces of artwork that come from the, the, uh, the Pulitzer family's collection, Emily Pulitzer. Yes, so, and this is a great uh, opportunity for us again to think about the past 10 years. The inaugural exhibition at the Pulitzer when it opened in 2001 was curated by Emmy Pulitzer, and she curated her own collection. And I think you probably know that Emmy's background uh, is as a curator of art, and the choices that she made are ones um, that look very much like the ones a curator would make. So she, you know, she chose the, you know, probably the most celebrated examples of, of works of art by artists like Picasso or uh, Lichtenstein or others. Uh, and you know, she had a, I think, a, a more formal kind of presentation of the works of art in the building. She asked Getty Saboni, who is an artist living and working in New York, um, to come and essentially do the same thing. But she, in no way, uh, inhibited his uh, his selection of works of art. She didn't sway him one way or the other. She just gave him carte blanche and said, you know, make a selection and do with it what you will. You have total, you know, total freedom. I'm a little surprised by that, with her background. I mean, if it were me, I'd be saying, let's do it this way. Well, I think this <laughs> says a lot about the Pulitzer Foundation and, and what kind of you know, freedom um, there is to take risk uh, at the Pulitzer. We're going to take a look at some of that artwork a little bit later okay. uh, in the program because you brought along some examples. Uh, talk a little bit more about the curator, uh, Getty Saboni. And we have a couple of images, I think, uh, of him as he's, I think, setting up the exhibit that's now up and running. Right, so Getty is an artist who, as I said, he lives in and works in uh, New York, and he, uh, this is not his first, uh, his first exhibition in St. Louis. He had an exhibition a few years ago, maybe five years ago, I can't remember exactly uh, the, the date, but it was curated by Anthony Huberman, who was then the curator at the Contemporary Art Museum. Emmy Pulitzer had uh, come to know his work prior to that, and she'd actually started collecting his work. Um, he's an artist who uh, works with uh, th things that we might consider the kind of detritus of everyday uh, life. So he'll take a piece of cardboard, he'll take a sheet of plastic, he'll take a, a carpet scrap, and he puts them together in this incredible delicate um, way so that um, there's something almost kind of ephemeral about the way his sculptures come together. And he, he brings a kind of beauty to everyday materiality and, and really my experience of his work is that it really forces you to sort of slow down and think about the relationship of shapes and materiality and, and, and the space that you inhabit with the, the sculpture itself. And in the art world, he has quite a reputation. He does. He's doing, uh, he's doing quite well. Yeah. Uh, so this exhibit uh, in the Still Epiphany, which runs through October, how long does it take to, I know you've only been in St. Louis less than a year, but uh, how long does it take to put together an exhibition like this? I mean, what does it take? This is a, a great question. And in this case, um, certainly the, the timeline uh, was probably more uh, flexible or accelerated because so, much of the, uh, so many of the works of art were coming from Emmy's 
private collection, but there are also loans from Harvard University Art Museum, the St. Louis Art Museum, and the Kemper, because the Pulitzers have given gifts to those institutions over time, and they very generously lent them uh, to the Pulitzer for this exhibition. Whenever you're lending or asking to, to borrow from another institution, you need to give them considerable lead time. So most institutions like at least a year um, in advance uh, uh, to, to entertain these requests, and that allows them to get the works of art ready to change them out if they're on view you know, in their own galleries and to prepare them in terms of conservation. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's just you know, creating the, the checklist, the kind of conceptual backbone of the installation. But then there's a lot of design work that goes into uh, presenting the works of art. So cases need to be made, mounts need to be made. Um, and then you also want to you know, you create some wiggle room so that when you're actually in the, the space itself, um, you have certain ideas, you've made models, um, you have an idea of you know, what you think the exhibition will look like. But once you get into the space, sometimes the works surprise you or they don't work as well as you uh, you thought you know one might and you might want to switch one out or kind of move things around so you, you want to give yourself some kind of you know window of opportunity to make changes and to just react to what's happening right. in the space. So how long was Getty Saboni the curator actually on the, the scene actually in town? So he it was here installing for two weeks uh -huh. um, and but he had been working on the show for over a year and had made visits uh, here to meet with our very very talented staff um, his uh, installation involved a lot of um, uh, display furniture that he, uh, that he designed specifically for the, the works of art. And as I think the installation shots will show, these aren't kind of standard you know, square pedestals. And so uh -huh. um, that required a lot of uh, back and forth between our staff and, and Getty. Uh -huh. So when we say that the, the, uh, the work in this exhibition comes from the personal collection of Mrs. Pulitzer, one might think, oh, does that mean she has it in her house? But no, these are things she might have scattered around the country and being shown in other institutions? So it's a combination of, of both. These are mm -hmm. works that she still privately owns and lives with. Um, many of the works in the, uh, in the exhibition would fall under that category. But as I said, she and her late husband have been very, very generous to institutions like the Harvard University Art Museum, uh, the St. Louis Art Museum and the, the Kemper. So it's a combination of all of those things. And her, uh, her uh, husband, Joseph Pulitzer, Jr. That's right. right. We have a long history in St. Louis. Exactly. And other places. Well, we're going to take a look at some of uh, the work that's in that exhibition when we come back in okay. just a few minutes. We're talking about the Pulitzer Foundation for the Arts and a new ex exhibition celebrating their 10th anniversary. We'll have more City Corner right after this. is being accused of committing one of the largest investment frauds in the history of the United States. I guess we're not going to Aspen. That's fine. You see, I like tennis balls. He likes insider trading. So he's going to jail and I'm going to a shelter. And no, they're not the same thing. Shelters are for good pets that want to be adopted. Jails are for criminals. I've done nothing. Uh-oh. Okay, I stole a cheeseburger once on my dog. I love the show, I think it's a lot of fun. I love the show, I watch the show every night. We have great guests on there. I enjoy watching the best of the STL. I love the show, and I love to watch it all the time. Thank you very much. I just recently started watching the program, and so far I have really enjoyed it. It's wonderful what you do with the kids or anything, and putting the St. Louis on the map. Hi, I really like uh, your show. Hi, I love your show. I watch it every day, every time you come on. I love your show. We may get to enjoy retirement, but our old cell phones shouldn't. Recycle them. It's easy, it's free, and it's good for the environment. Hi, this is Richard Garn. Please answer the call to recycle. Even innocent things can trigger an asthma attack. Learn more at noattacks.org. 
please make the monsters go away. Yo, what up? It's your man Nelly, and you watch your STL TV. Experience the loop all day. I'm Steve Potter, and welcome back to City Corner. We're talking with Christina Van Dyke. She's the director of the Pul Pulitzer Foundation for the Arts. They're celebrating their 10th anniversary year with some other things going on. But the main thing is an exhibition of uh, artwork from the uh, Pulitzer family collection, Emily Pulitzer. That's right. Right. And uh, you, you, you are doing other events, by the way. We, yes, we have a... a a lot of programming uh, that's developed around any exhibition we do and I would urge uh, viewers to just check out our website um, but one of the most exciting things we will do in conjunction with our 10th anniversary is host our first ever symphony festival and that takes place in uh, mid-June it's a collaboration with the St. Louis Symphony uh, and it honors a, a program that was uh, developed uh, over the past uh, seven or eight years David Robertson the artistic director for the, the symphony director, here, yeah. the music director for the, uh, the symphony here, um, has uh, developed a series of concerts in conjunction with our exhibitions. It's a subscription series. And in uh, honor of our 10th anniversary, a number of the works that have been performed in the past will be re-performed in June, along with, uh, with new work added. Right. So the symphony just did some work with Reflections of the Buddha, which was just recent. That's well, right. So. Yeah, so this was part of this um, ongoing series that we yeah. have, the subscription uh, series. And it's, you know, these are very, very special events for us and for our visitors uh, because they allow visitors to experience the exhibition in a new way. So the, 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 the concerts actually take place in the exhibition space itself. We transform the exhibition space into uh, a kind of mini auditorium. The audience is capped at about 100 people, so it's a very intimate experience. And you know, like I said, it really allows, I think, people to have a, have a new point of access to an exhibition. So not purely visual, not purely architectural, but bringing in the music. All right, just a recap before, and we're going to look at some of the artwork that's in this current exhibition in just a moment. Before we do, a little recap on the building. We have a couple of images of that located in Grand Center. It's become a very important part of Grand Center. And the way Grand Center is developing with uh, other art spaces, galleries, performance spaces, it's a great place to, to be, don't you think? It is. And, and as I said before, it's a very uh, important landmark in St. Louis. It's something that St. Louisans should be very proud of. It's Tadao Ando's first museum building in the United States. He had done a little bit of work inside the galleries at the Art Institute in Chicago. Um, and subsequently has built uh, a museum in Fort Worth and um, at the Clark Art Institute in Williamstown. Well, now, you have a background in this, obviously. You came from Houston. That's your last place of employment. How does the Pulitzer Building um, compare with what's in other major cities in this country? So I, I was very spoiled, in fact, to work in a Renzo Piano Building uh, in Houston. I worked at the Manil Collection. And uh, at the Manil, the way that the, that institution shows art, uh, again, uh, taps into this experience of, of natural light. Um, I would say that the Manil and the Pulitzer are, are kindred spirits. It probably has a lot to do with how I ended up um, at the Pulitzer. Mm -hmm. These are both institutions that tend to show art in a very minimalist way. Um, and so that means, you know, almost no didactic material at the Manil collection, um, whereas at the Pulitzer, I would say we're even more radical in that we don't provide any kind of text on the wall whatsoever. You can pick up a gallery guide. Um, to help you identify works as you move through the, um, the exhibition. But in both places, the idea is really that you are capable um, of having your own experience with art and that that experience comes from looking and engaging and letting your mind wander. And so I think both institutions uh, architecturally grant tremendous freedom uh, to uh, viewers and in terms mm -hmm. of the way they display art. How long were you in thing. Houston? I was there almost seven years. Really? Well, you've uh, gone through your first St. Louis winter, and uh, <laughs> we really didn't have one this year. So I wait, liked it. Wait till I next year. Yeah, we can do a repeat of it's that. It's got to be a lot different than Houston, I'm sure. It is. And your background actually is in what, African art? That's right. I did my graduate work in African art history, and I uh, studied the art and architecture of Mali, a country in, in West Africa. All right, let's look at some of the artwork that's featured in, in the Still Epiphany. 
at the Pulitzer Foundation for the Arts, all part of the collection of the Pulitzer family. And there's our first piece. That's right. This is one of my favorite works in the show. It's a self-portrait uh, of the artist Vuillard, and it comes, uh, it's dated, I think, to the late uh, 19th century. It's, I think, circa 1892. Um, this is uh, an incredibly intense uh, little portrait. I don't think it probably will translate uh, perfectly on television, and so I would urge you know, viewers to come in and, and see it themselves. Um, it's a very intimately scaled work, and um, it's, it's very intense because the, uh, the, the figure, Vuillard, is placed in a very shallow uh, space, um, and his face almost kind of blurs, um, in relation to the, the, the other uh, areas that are painted around it. And so there's something very kind of frenetic and intense um, about, about this work of art. And it's, of course, always interesting to think about how an artist sees himself. I mean, this is a, mm -hmm. a self-portrait. You say intimate. Is that what you say, way of saying that it's a small piece? It's a small piece, um, but it's also the, the space itself. is a very uh, kind of domestic feeling uh, space. You can kind of see this trace of what looks like a wallpaper or sort of painted um, border. Uh -huh. um, the this, this space that's represented in the, the work itself is very, um, it's very tight. Um, so it makes it feel like you're, you're really up close in a very intimate way with, um, with the artist, confronting the artist. Let's go to the next one. So this is a major centerpiece of the uh, exhibition. It's a work by Pablo Picasso, and as you can see, it's a it's depicting a fire a fireplace. It comes from um, the, the cubist uh, phase of Picasso's work, and um, this is great the the order that we're looking at these uh, works in because when you come into the first exhibition space in the the Pulitzer, you're confronted by a series of portraits like the one that we just looked at, and you're very focused on. Um, engaging with other human beings, with other figures, and kind mm -hmm. of thinking about the way that you meet people in a, in a uh, rather um, intimate space itself, because this first space of the, of the Pulitzer has a much lower ceiling um, and a kind of smaller scale. As you move into the main gallery, which is this incredibly lofty, uh, beautiful space, you encounter um, the fireplace, and then a number of other um, works of art that depict uh, these kind of domestic settings. And so you shift from a very figural uh, introduction into, uh, into a gallery where the, the tone of the gallery is, um, is set by these references to domestic spaces. So Christina, for those people that haven't been there, is it important the order of the rooms that you go in when you go into the Pulitzer? I mean, can you just walk anywhere or is there a path to follow? There is a, a path to follow, certainly when you come in, there's only one way to come into the, um, into the building. But then, you know, this goes back to what I was saying earlier about the kind of generosity of the, of the architecture. Um, you are really free to wander and discover uh, the building on your own. And this mm -hmm. is very intentional on the part of the, um, on the, part of the architect. Let's uh, look at more work from uh, the epiphany, what is it? This in the still epiphany. In the, in the still epiphany, I'll spit that this out. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous painting by Pierre Bonnard. It's uh, Still Life with Ham, and it comes from uh, about, I think, 1940 is the date on this. And this is a work of art that is just totally activated by the sunlight in the, in the main gallery. Because um, of the colors, you mean? Uh, the colors are amazing. It's, it almost reads as like a mosaic. You can't tell where one, you know, bit of color begins and the next um, ends. And, the, you know, there's these kind of violet uh, colors, these deep reds, just this gorgeous um, range of, of color. Bonnard was a great colorist. Uh -huh. Let's go to the next one. This, uh, as this a, is the opposite of that. <laughs> this is, um, and it comes from, you know, kind of shockingly, not, um, not that, you know, that much later. I mean, we were looking at a, a painting by uh, Bonnard from 1940, and here we're looking at a work from Lucio Fontana um, from the 1960s. I think this work comes from uh, 1966. Um, and this is a work that is uh, placed in our cube gallery, so it's at the end of the long uh, exhibition space. And uh, Fontana was an artist who was very interested in, in kind of taking painting off the wall and thinking about the relationship of, of painting and sculpture. And so um, there's a cutout element, that kind of uh, black frame with the, the scallop that actually projects out into the, um, into the space. And Fontana would also you know, make slashes in his canvases or, or, or okay. puncture them in some way to kind of create a sense of um, space moving through a work of art. I think we have four more to look at. Let's uh, try to 
uh, see those in the minutes we have remaining. This is one of the most uh, mysterious works of art in the, um, in the exhibition, and um, I, I wish I could tell you more about it as an Africanist. Um, it comes from around 5000 uh, BC or 2500 BC, somewhere mm. in, that, um, in that range. Um, it came from the desert area in, in Niger and in West Africa. And um, unfortunately, we know very little about these works of art. This is a very tiny uh, work of art. You can kind of almost put it in your hand. This is a portrait by uh, Paul Cezanne, uh, who of course is a very famous uh, French artist. It's a portrait of Jules Perron. And um, as I understand it, this uh, gentleman stood up in Cezanne's uh, wedding. He was a witness um, in his wedding. This is also in the first gallery. And then this is a work by, uh, by Redon, who was a, a symbolist. It's called The Wind. Um, and this, again, a very mysterious uh, painting. The, this kind of disembodied head kind of emerges from um, the, the darkness. Sort of eerie. Yes. And we have one more. And this is by uh, an artist named Rosso, uh, who was an Italian artist. It's called The Golden Age, and it depicts a mother uh, kissing a child. Um, it's a, a sculpture, and the way that it's displayed at the Pulitzer, you can actually see the back as well as uh, the front. Again, like the Redon that we were just looking at, you can see there's almost a sense of something kind of emerging, coming into, um, into being. Well, this is a fascinating exhibition, and I think there are almost 50 different uh, um, pieces of art in all on display at the Pulitzer Foundation for the Arts until October 23rd, I think it is. Free and open to the public on Wednesdays and... Saturdays. Wednesdays and Saturdays. Also, Ann Hamilton, uh, she did an interesting project at the Pulitzer, was it last year? And you're doing a book about that, are you? Yeah, so the book uh, related to that exhibition, Stylus, uh, has recently been published and is available at the, at the Pulitzer, and I believe it uh, can also be accessed through our website. Well, we'll have a... We'll have information about how to reach your website. We hope people come by and see it. And Christina Van Dyke, welcome to St. Louis, and I hope you enjoy your tenure here. I hope it's a long and productive one for you. Thank you, and thanks for having me on the show. It's been our pleasure. Thanks so much. Uh, that's In the Still Epiphany at the Pulitzer Foundation for the Arts, October the 23rd. I'm Steve Potter. That's all the time we have on Cityscape today. Thanks for being here and joining us. See you next time. Bye.